Hello everyone and welcome to a Factorio tutorial. Today we are talking about signals. So we'll talk about the rail and chain signal both and a couple use cases for them. Uh, signals come in two varieties, the basic rail signal and then a slightly but not that complicated chain signal. Um, so what they do when you put them down on the track is they will separate the track into blocks so if I set that down there, all of a sudden I have a pink block and a blue block. So when I have a train, um, it's going to read the right, or at least mine, I do a right-handed drive. So mine will read the right signal. So if I'm imagining I'm in this train, I read the signal to the right side of it. So if it's facing um, up, let's say like that. So the right side, of course, would be there. A little easier to see. So um, what this will do is it'll read the next block and tell you if there is a train or something on the track. So if I put a train here in this next block, this blue one, all of a sudden it will turn red. So this train, if it's automated, will stop uh, right before this signal. Now, if you're using a system where you have a train going both directions like that, then you will also need a chain signal coming this direction. So if I'm going this direction, the right side would be here. And now you can see that this top signal is red because it's reading this block. And this is green because it's reading this block here. And that's all it does. It just reads the next block. I'm going to keep it down to one just to keep it um, a little simpler for the video. Now a chain signal is going to work the same way. It's going to read the next block, but it's also going to read the next signal. So if the next signal, let's say, is a uh, rail signal, this is green because there's nothing here, which means that this is green because it's reading this signal. Now if I put a train here, this of course turns red because there's something here or sorry about that or if I put a train here all of a sudden this signal is red which means this turns red because this is reading that and you can chain them as many as you want so if I had a chain signal there and then a rail signal now this is reading this and this is reading this so if I put one here this turns red which will turn this one red, which will turn this one red. So it just chains all the way down the line. And that's really it. And again, if you're using a uh, track with a train moving in both directions, make sure you put them on both sides of the track. And you'll actually see sort of these green squares that will tell you uh, the train is reading this right side. And now on the way back, we have one for the right side this way. And now a couple use cases. The first one will be a simple intersection. Stop it. Okay. Easy enough. Oh, before I get to there, one of the most important things that I almost forgot. When you are doing your signals, whether they're chain or rail, uh, make sure that the space in between them is as long as your train, at least as long. So longer is fine. So let's say I have a one, one, one train. Okay. The signal is going to have to be at least that length. Otherwise, you're going to get to some really bad traffic jams and stuff. And then to make that easier, just copy, control C, and then you can paste it all the way down the track at the same length and again put them on both sides if your train is moving in both directions if it's moving in one direction you just have to put them on that side so intersections the very simple rule of intersections is to rail in chain out i would also spread them out uh, so that it was the same length as the train but for the video, I'm going to make it a little more compact. So again, if, I, if my train is traveling this direction to the right, it's going to go into the intersection. So we chain in and rail out. That's because you don't want the train stopping in the middle. So if this was, let's say there was a train um, 
if this was a signal like that and there was a train here, well, this is still gonna go and it's gonna stop right here, which we don't want. We want this to stop before the intersection. So we put a chain signal and then it'll read this one. And now this will stop here and leave the intersection open. So again, chain into the intersection, rail out of the intersection. Uh, we can also do it, let's imagine we're traveling upwards like this. So on the right side, we chain in to the intersection. And then imagining we're driving out of the intersection this way, we rail out. And of course, if you're going in both directions, you have to do it for all sides. So if I'm traveling left, we chain in, rail out. If I'm traveling down, we would chain in, rail out. And that is your completed intersection. Um, it looks a little complicated, but hopefully uh, once you saw it step by step like that, it makes a little more sense. So if I have one there, this turns red because it's in this block, which will turn this one red. So if another train is coming, it will stop there and leave this intersection open. And last use case scenario is a simple, simple depot. And this is useful if you need to make like a mining outpost or something, or maybe you need to offload something. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is put our train station down because we'll want to automate this, of course. Now we basically want two blocks. We want this top block where the arch is and we want this bottom block uh, so traffic can keep going if it's not stopping at the depot. So we're gonna put our signals here and that'll separate uh, these blocks. This white just means that it's going to um, be a signal for this track going the other direction. So if I were to put it in the white, um, it's actually gonna make it a bi-directional or two-way two, two -way track. So just watch that and make sure you place it in the green if, if that's what your intent is. And now we need to go to the other side of the block and close it off. And I'm actually gonna use uh, chain signals for this. So it's sort of the opposite of the inter intersection. Um, we wanna chain at the end of this because we wanna make sure that before either of these trains enter this little uh, no man's land here, we wanna make sure that this next block, which if this cliff wasn't here, I would expand. Um, we wanna make sure this block is clear before these two even attempt to share this little space. Um, so that is, I don't even think I can fit a train there to show you, yeah. So if there's a train there, the train will stop, this train will stop here this train will stay in the station until this train is gone, then they're free to go. And we want that to happen. And if you do like more depots here, if you do a second one, it'll just make sure that they don't all jam up. Um, and that's, oh, and I would also put one at the beginning here uh, because again, we don't want the train to, to have to make a decision where it stops here or here. We want it to make sure it stops here and then when it's clear, it'll be able to make the correct decision on which track to go on. Um, that should solve a lot of future problems for you, kind of nip it in the bud. Um, but hopefully that all makes sense with the very basics of signals. They can get very complicated very quickly. Just take it one track, one direction at a time. Um, and that should be all right. So hopefully that helped. Uh, leave a comment, like, or subscribe below if you want to, and of course, have yourselves a very nice day.